Welcome to Kim Ludd Channel. Imagine planning a trip between major American cities. Driving or flying are the usual options, but trains? That often gets a laugh. It's ironic that the U.S., once a railway powerhouse, lacks high-speed trains today. But there's a new hope on the horizon. We are going to talk about the $140 billion race to build America's first high-speed railway, a company from Orlando, Florida, is making progress in bringing high-speed rail to America. Let's explore America's struggles with high-speed rail and why this new player might finally change the game. It's a story of setbacks, challenges, and maybe, just maybe, a light at the end of the tunnel. The Rise and Fall of American Railways Let's take a quick trip down memory lane, shall we? Cast your mind back almost 200 years, when the first railroads in America were just getting started. For over a century, the United States was the proud owner of one of the world's most advanced and well-used rail networks. Trains were the lifeblood of the nation, connecting cities, transporting goods, and carrying dreamers to new frontiers. But then, everything changed. The 1950s rolled around, and with them came two game changers, the jet age and the interstate highway system. Suddenly, Americans could zip across the country in a matter of hours by plane, or hit the open road in their shiny new cars. It was a whole new world of possibilities, and people were loving it. By the time the swinging 60s arrived, car travel had skyrocketed to nearly four times what it was in the mid-40s and plane travel? That had increased a whopping 15 times. The writing was on the wall for our trusty trains. As one transportation expert put it, when cars and planes took off, a lot of the brilliant minds working on railways either jumped ship to these new industries or hung up their hats for good. The next generation of engineers had their heads in the clouds, quite literally, studying aerospace instead of railways. Just like that, the pool of railway talent started to dry up. A glimmer of hope. But the dream of high-speed rail in America wasn't dead yet. In 1965, inspired by Japan's Shinkansen, President Johnson announced plans to study high-speed rail between urban centers, focusing on the Washington to Boston corridor. Over the next decade, test trains hit speeds over 150 miles per hour, and by 1969, services were running at 120 miles per hour, not far behind Japan's speeds at the time. It seemed America was still in the race. The Great Divide. Today, the U.S. lags far behind in high-speed rail. Amtrak's Akala, the fastest in America, reaches 150 miles per hour only briefly. Compare that to China, France, and Spain, where trains regularly cruise at 200 miles per hour. The International Union of Railways sets the bar for high speed at 155 miles per hour minimum. By that standard, even America's best doesn't quite cut. It's a stark reminder of how far the U.S. has fallen behind in the high speed rail race, the catch-up game. America's still trying to catch up. In 2023, the government announced $8 billion for passenger rail projects. The California High Speed Rail Project, aiming to connect LA and San Francisco, is a prime example of the challenges. Eight years in, it's less than half built, nowhere near the main cities, and costs have ballooned to over $100 billion. Land acquisition has been a major hurdle, with property owners often holding out for more money. It's a stark reminder of the complexities involved in building high-speed rail in the U.S. A new contender. Enters the ring. Enter Brightline, a game-changer in American rail. They've just completed a new railway in Florida, the fastest outside the Northeast Corridor at 125 miles per hour. 
It's the first privately funded rail line in over a century, costing $6 billion. Brightline secured Wall Street backing and overcame major challenges, including upgrading a 100-year-old bridge. Their smart approach involved mostly upgrading existing tracks and utilizing highway-adjacent land for new sections. This success story shows there might be a new way forward for American Rail. The next big thing. Brightline's next ambitious project is Brightline West, a $12 billion high-speed rail connecting Las Vegas to Southern California. With speeds of 186 miles per hour, it aims to cut the journey time to just three hours, compared to a five-hour drive. The plan is to launch by mid-2028, in time for the Olympics. Cleverly, 96% of the route will run alongside the existing I-15 highway, minimizing environmental impact and land acquisition issues. This approach could be a game changer for future high-speed rail projects in America. The road ahead. Now, it's going to take a lot of work. There's still a funding gap to fill, and parts of the route, like the steep Cajun Pass, are going to be tricky to navigate for high-speed trains. But with bipartisan support from officials in both states and a track record of getting things done, Brightline West is looking like it might just beat California's troubled high-speed rail project to the finish line. Conclusion America's struggle to build high-speed rail has been going on for so long that many people have given up hope. But Brightline's success in Florida has shown that with the right approach, it is possible to build new railways in the U.S. now, they're aiming to go even bigger and faster on the West Coast. Will Brightline West be the project that finally brings true high-speed rail to America? Or will it be another dream derailed? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. It's an exciting time for rail enthusiasts and everyday travelers alike. The idea of zooming between major cities at speeds of over 180 miles per hour bypassing traffic jams and airport security lines is certainly appealing. And who knows? Maybe one day, planning a trip between two American cities will bring to mind not just cars and planes, but sleek, high-speed trains as well. If you've enjoyed this journey through America's high-speed rail aspirations, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories about the world's most ambitious construction and infrastructure projects. Until next time, keep dreaming big and moving forward.